All right, so continuing on from the previous video, um, we don't, we're going to go ahead and start making our start screen and then making it go to this screen. So we don't really need this here right now. Um, if you want it there, it's fine. If you don't, it's, it's up to you. But we're going to go back to our assets and then we're going to go to our scenes. And then you should only have this one here. What you're going to want to do is create another scene called start. And the way we're going to do that is right click, go to create, and then you can go ahead and create a scene right here. But what I did was I just took this scene because I don't want to have to redo everything, um, the, the camera and all this other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this scene here and I'm going to uh, control D, hit control D and duplicate it. As you can see, there's a duplication here. And then I'm going to just rename that to uh, start. Now I have two starts here. So let me rename this to uh, so that way I don't have two of the same name. All right, so here's the copy that I just made and I'm gonna name this one start so that we're working on the same page. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the start. I'm gonna save this current scene. And so I have now my start open. The reason why I duplicated it because I don't want to have to redo a whole bunch of stuff. So I have everything here and I'm just going to make this actually my start screen. Uh, I can go ahead and leave the character someplace. Um, nah. Yeah, let's just leave the character here. Um, now all I need to do is add my buttons. So I'm going to go here to my sprites, my UI elements, and I have my buttons here. The only thing is, I don't want to just add buttons in here like this because they're not really buttons. They're just sprites. So what I want to do is add an interface that's going to hold actual buttons that I can res that the system can respond to. So the way I'm going to do that is go up here to the main um, the main stage, and then uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to UI and I'm going to go ahead and add uh, a button. I could add a canvas, then add a button, but if I add a button, it'll automatically add a canvas alongside of it. Now the canvas is massive, so if I scroll out, you'll see there's the canvas. So there's a few things we have to do in order to get the canvas at the right size. First we select the canvas, and then we're going to go over here to the right hand side, and we're going to change this screen space to space camera, and then we're going to go ahead and take this main camera over here, and drag it over here. Select Canvas, then drag the main canvas over here to the render camera. And so what will happen is everything will become a lot smaller. You'll be able to see the little white line that's around here. And although you can't see the button, the button is here. So if I select on this button, you'll see that the button is there. The only thing is, is that the canvas is behind the background. So I want to go ahead and put this canvas on a particular layer. And now what we're talking about is different layers like paper on top of a desk. Okay, so the zero, the, the last layer, the one that's right on the desk is, is the zero layer. So when I look over here, I see on the canvas, I see this order in layer. Um, so this is on layer zero and everything else also is on layer zero. So it doesn't know which one to put forward. So what I want to do, since the canvas is always going to be on top, I'm going to put the canvas at layer one. That way, no matter what I render here, the canvas will always be on top. So now I can see my button here. So what I want to do here is change the size of this button, uh, but I need to be able to uh, change some, some more things right here inside of my canvas here. So I need to change this to the width and height of my game, the game itself. I'm going to go to my game tab here. and I can see here I have it at 1024 by 600. So when I go back to my canvas and I look over here, I'm going to see that I have this constant pixel size. I don't want constant pixel size. I'm going to put scale to width of the screen. And then I'm going to change this right here to 1024. by 600 basically because my game is 1024 by 600 and the next thing I'm going to do is right in here to this match I'm going to put 0.5 and then what I'm going to do is go here to the main camera and I'm going to make sure all this right here where it says skybox I'm going to change this to solid color and then I'm going to change this to black 
So now I have uh, a button here in my game and I have a character over here when, in my game view. Now what I want to do is go ahead and take this button. I'm going to position this button in a place where I want the player to click start. I'm going to change the text inside of this button. So inside of this button, there'll be a text box here. But I don't just want this called button because I'll be adding other buttons. So I want a naming convention. And I'm going to use what's called camel case naming convention. So BTN will stand for button and that'll start in lowercase. But I'm going to call this button start since this will be my start button. And then I'm going to call the text under here TXT start because that stands for the text box but it belongs to the start button. That makes sense. So when I have another button, I can go ahead and do that same thing. But I'm not going to make another button yet until I make this one because I can just duplicate this once I'm done making it. Now I want to change the look of this button. And now we see where our UI elements come into play here. So I'm going to select the button. And then over here, I'll see that it says button. It just says button here. And then it has a transition. We don't want the color tint. What we want to use is a sprite swap. And on the highlight, now we can go ahead and drag any of these for the highlight. And I'm going to drag this highlight right here, and it's going to say button 4 there. And it's going to say pressed when it's pressed. I'm going to use this one. And then when it's disabled, I'll go ahead and use this one here. So what did we do? We went ahead and added all these states to the button. But it doesn't look like the button changed. Well, because these are states. When the game is being played, and, it, and there's interaction, these things take place. When I want it, when it's static, an image there, I have to go here to the image source here, and then I'm just gonna uh, <coughs> go ahead and place this image here for the static image. Then you see it changes to the size uh, and look that we want, but it changed to the same size as the button, so the image is fitting the button. What I want is the button to fit the image. So I'm gonna go over here to preserve aspect, and then it's going to change to where the image and the button kind of go together. And then I'm going to change it back. I'm going to change to set native size. And then it'll go grow huge, the same size as the button. Now, I can go ahead and resize this. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and change the text in here. Now, I'm going to call this start. And then I'm going to give it maybe a size of 25. Actually, a lot bigger than that, 55. Let's try 75. 75 seems pretty good. And this font does not seem very good at all. So I think it's a good idea that we can download a font here to make this look better. I can e I can go ahead and change the, the, the text color here. But that still kind of looks kind of lame there. So I want to go ahead and change the text color, uh, the type of the font that we have. Now, you can't just go here and add fonts that you don't have because fonts are copywritten and you have to add fonts into your game so it can ship it with your game. So it's not like, like Word where you can just go through a whole list of fonts if you didn't install them. So we have to install our fonts. And a really good place for finding free fonts is a place called Font Squirrel. So if you go to fontsquirrel.com, this is the website right here, Font Squirrel. And basically what you can do is search for fonts. Uh, so let's say if I was searching for any, I could just stick any name in there. Action Man, how does that look? I'm going to select Action Man. That looks pretty cool. Maybe that can be it. Um, I can test drive this to say test drive and I can type the word that I want to test drive. Maybe that's the, the look I want. Uh, I can change the size of that. Action Man Bold. Action Man, let's see. So just go through these to see which one, you know, which font that you like. That looks pretty cool right there. So once I have this font, I want to make sure that these things here are visible. Because what these mean is that uh, they will allow you to use this for free on any device. So if you're missing any of these, so if the mobile is missing, that means you're not allowed to use it uh, for mobile. But for right now, this is open source. Pretty good. Really good. So I don't have to go to Illustrator and create new fonts or purchase fonts or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and download this TTF file. And I'm going to store this TTF file inside of my... Uh, my game documentation. So first I'm going to open this up and I am going to unzip it. 
Now, here's the zip file here, okay? So I want to unzip all of these, and then I want to import those into my Unity. Now, before I even do that, I'm going to create a fonts folder. So I'm going to right-click on my assets and create a folder, create new folder fonts. I already did mine. Here it is. I already have a font downloaded, but right now I'm going to download this Action Man font. And here are here's everything in that folder. Now, I'm thinking, take this folder right here and just throw it in there as Action Man, like this. So I have Action Man folder here. So now when I go here to my text, I can go here, dot here, and it's going to search for all the fonts that I have. And I can choose different fonts and I can see it over here. So this actually works a little bit better for me. That looks pretty cool. That looks awesome. And actually, I'm going to choose this one not even the one I downloaded. Now, I can alter this text this way, or I can alter the text with the alignment. I like to move it around a little bit because sometimes it doesn't align properly. So, if I wanted this text to be aligned with the, the let's say, the button itself, I can put align by geometry, and it'll align by the geometry. But as you can see here, because of this picture, it looks like it's pushed up too high on the top. So I'm just going to push it down just a little bit like that once I hit align uh, to geometry. Now I can go ahead and resize this button. So I'm going to select the top layer button here, and then I am going to resize that button from the center while I push from the middle. I might shrink it just a little bit, or yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to bring it down here, maybe there. All right, so now I have my start button. So now we're going to go through the full motion of uh, adding functionality to this button. And I think we should do that in the next video because this video is almost uh, time's up for this video. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video when we're going to actually make this button go to the next stage.